Hello? Does it always break? There it is. Set up. All right. Bye bye. Welcome back, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is uh, the viewer suggestion. I think that much is called that from now on. I think viewer suggestion is probably pretty good. Um, since that's all we ever do anymore, it's just do viewer suggestion. Yay. Um, we have quite a few suggestions today. So we're probably going to try to jump right into that. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all I got. It's Wednesday. It's chill day. Hanging out on Discord. People are welcome to come hang out if they like. Uh, let's draw rugby. Yeah. Let's start it off with a rugby today. I really should do a how to draw rugby video. Draw a mushroom. That's it. That's how you draw rugby. <laughs> One of these days I'm gonna accidentally redraw rugby completely different. It's gonna break everything. Gotta get that warm up. Hey, everything, everything a going. Gold tooth, hello, hello. How are you today? Oh boy, I made him real floofy today. him different one day and it's going to mess you up. Yeah. <laughs> out, fresh out of the shower rugby is apparently what we're, <laughs> what we're drawing today. Blow dried. Yeah, blow dried rugby. We were, I was playing uh, across the obelisk yesterday and all of the rogue moves are like backstab and garrot and like just you're supposed to stealth and then stab people but all of the pictures are of like bright red naked orcs getting shanked by a guy in a cloak <laughs> and it was just like why is everybody why is everybody always getting killed in the shower like what's happening here uh, it just became an ongoing joke is it a reference to psycho i no i don't think so not specifically it's just it's just really odd just the artist felt the same way about clothes as I do. Yeah, only if you're dying, though. Like, apparently, any other time is fine, but when you're, uh, when you're, I don't know if people can hear me. They can't. Okay. Um, but when you're getting shanked, apparently you're not allowed to wear armor or clothes. And it's just really strange. I think the shower part came about because I was playing a... I was playing a healer that kept doing like healing rain, and so I was just like, "Everybody, take a shower!" And then someone would get shanked. I'm like, "Why is everybody naked?" Oh, because of the shower. So it was it was an ongoing bit, but it was funny. Uh, I've discovered that I've been doing too much uncolored stuff, or stuff with a pre-made color palette recently. I've forgotten color schemes. I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah, color is tough. Color is tough because it can be determined by your lighting. It can be determined by your base colors. 
Color theory stuff. Yeah. Color theory is good to study, but I, I couldn't I couldn't teach it. I don't think if I wanted to like, I don't have a good comprehension of it. It just what I do is all gut. It's all gut feeling. I don't have an actual. Uh, maybe I do. Like I guess I tend to use blues for shadows. Uh, that's something I do quite often. But I will throw that out the window if I think something else looks better, so who knows. My theory is bad, but my practice is okay. And that's that's kind of fine for art. Like <clears throat> It's good to know the theory, though, but you can get by a lot with the seat of your paints. Yeah. Color theory is something that you definitely use, I think, the most in painting. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I don't think you need it quite as much in line art based illustration, and you definitely don't need it so much in sculpture because, like, the sculpture takes care of itself. That's very true. Yeah, especially even in digital medium, um, color is, is not permanent. Yeah. So. It's not as important, but yeah, painting I, painting is kind of like you need to learn that first because you only get one try, but you'll be redoing a lot of stuff. Yeah. I have been trying to learn a bunch of that stuff because my digital painting is not looking the way I want it to, and I've realized that that is the reason why, because my color theory is lacking. Would be as a noodly boy today. Is that what happens when he gets wet? <laughs> <laughs> Atlas, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Are we quiet? Uh, are you quiet? Let's take a look. Uh, go ahead and talk for a little bit. I okay. said I was. Ooh. Eh, no, you're all right. I said I was going to start listening to my own audio. And I forgot. Let me do that real quick. Oh, but I can't really do that with... that. That's right. I was going to have you guys not... Oh, but I can't really do that with... I was going to have you guys not be on the audio so that I could listen to it and monitor it. And I've forgotten that I was going to do that. So it doesn't matter. There's a lot of suggestions today. There are. There are a lot of suggestions today. The channel is growing. And it is. I forgot to suggest something. Uh, Dr. Rem, go ahead and suggest it here in the chat, and I will add it to the list if that's what you'd like. Same thing goes for everybody. If you have a character you'd like to see drawn that you didn't get to put on the uh, suggestion thread of the community page, please let me know. Burning, hello as well. The voices that aren't Rook are quiet. Yes, okay, I can turn that up. I can turn that up. I might make the music louder. So we'll probably have to turn down. always the struggle. I hope that's not too loud or quiet. Gamble all! Hashi Brown, that's not even the right service. <laughs> Welcome in. It's still funny. That it is it still just funny. occasionally pops up as a joke. I was like, ah, I enjoy it as a joke. Gambling. Oh boy, do I hate gambling. Oh well. Lost <laughs> all my money. At least which function of gambling? I, you know, I didn't mind so much the Twitch function. It, it had its problems, though. It definitely had its problems. I mean, we we definitely ruined it, right? Yeah, yeah. I had a moment. <laughs> <laughs> I yelled at Burning on Sierra's stream about about like leveling out the the poles um, for no reason. It was funny. I thought it was funny, but still at the same time, it's like meh, 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 meh. It, everything will be abused on the internet, and it's it's sad. It saddens me. That's <laughs> why we can't have nice things. <laughs> Cold Oracle, please. I can add that to the list. Hold on a second. Jonas, hello, hello. Been while, yes. How are you? Ba, 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 ba. 
you're just in time for a noodle rugby. And what was supposed to be a, a maitake based mushy boy, but has turned out to be a broccoli kid. I was gonna ask, is this supposed to be broccoli? It is I, the broccoli child. Like that episode from Powerpuff Girls. Is there, is there a broccoli kid on Powerpuff Girls? There's like broccoli aliens oh. that invade Earth and take over the adults' minds. And the only way they can defeat the broccoli people is to eat them with cheese. <laughs> that is very it. weird. That is, is the best way to get rid of broccoli. Exactly. Just cheese. Doing all right? That's good. Good to hear. Hope you are doing well. All right, I think I'm warmed up. I think I'm warmed up. This is a really fast rugby, but I'm pretty happy with it. I do not like Velveeta cheese. It is not cheese. It is a cheese product. And it has the same kind of acidic, thick taste as American chocolate. Once again, not chocolate. Chocolate product. <laughs> differences. Oh, Hershey's chocolate isn't chocolate? I, you know, actually, I don't know. It's milk chocolate. And milk chocolate is denoted by its concentration of chocolate to not chocolate. Um, I think it still is technically considered chocolate, but... I mean, honestly, white chocolate isn't chocolate. White chocolate <laughs> is actually less chocolate than milk chocolate. Yes. <laughs> It is, though. That's because it's mostly cocoa butter, right? Most the uh, white chocolate that we get here in America is essentially just. Um, I mean, it's all fake and processed, so I don't know if it actually matters. Yeah. Well, fair. Um, milk chocolate is a suspension of cocoa solids in cocoa butter. Yeah, you're okay. So I think I think white chocolate might just be a higher concentration. You are correct. It's a confection. Okay, there you go. Da, 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 da. Made from cocoa butter, sugar, milk, salts, and sometimes vanilla. So it, it actually has no chocolate in it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just made out of cocoa butter. You're correct. The fat from cocoa beans. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially. Again, food. We always end up here, what? and like nobody should be surprised. I know. I mean, we have it's a twelve o'clock stream, right? Like people, are, I mean, lunch. People just ate lunch. Speaking of, how's everyone? How are things, Rooks? Is everyone's in voice. I'm doing pretty well. I'm doing all right. Been doing busy, good. busy, busy, and getting very little work done. Per the course, part of the course, part of the course, or for the course, yes. I got two. Two sketches done yesterday, like two line works. That was really cool. How about that? Got done. Let's see if I can finish those up today or tomorrow. Hey, yeah. Relatable. Hell yeah. All right. <clears throat> Got some extra peeper, peep, peepers? Some extra peepers in here. <laughs> I believe this is a burning. Tell me about my Mima. I am in here today. Welcome, welcome, Bernie. Uh, hey. Me. Sorry about calling you out for destroying poles. It's entirely <laughs> earned. <laughs> Destroy all the poles. Destroy all poles. All right. Today I'm starting with a... So the way we do this, for those of you who are new, uh, you can put suggestions in the chat or in the, the comments, and most likely chat would be better. But then I roll a d20, and because we have so many today, we only get d20. And uh, we take them off the list and we drop them. That's the plan. Indeed. The Polish people are the object poles. Uh, the community posts. How's that? Probably not a poll. Oh, you're asking if Bernie uh -huh. destroyed the Polish people? I don't think so, but I can't confirm that. I, I, have, no, I have no ill will toward the Polish people. All right, you heard it here. There's now a ceasefire between Burning Palace and the Polish. I don't know where <laughs> we're going with this. 
Uh, Me neither. Has gone off the rails. Barbarian tank with a profession made. Doesn't actually clean anything. If someone complains about not cleaning, she intimidates them into cleaning it. I like that. I like that. That's funny. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to draw that, but we're going to draw a barbarian tank. I don't know. I don't think there was a a race indication with that, so I'm going to go uh, tall elf. Sure, I can do that. Full elf. Swells. Swells. Yep, we need some more swells. My Welcome. exercise goal, I have a feeling I'm going to I'm going to become a swelf. <laughs> Best of luck. Thanks. <laughs> if you're a maid that doesn't clean anything, I assume you just look like a regular person. Maybe they took the job because they locked the outfit? I mean, maybe. I don't know. I think someone made the suggestion because they wanted to see a buff made. Yeah. Which is why I think I maybe should just draw whatever the hell I want. <laughs> but who knows? Who knows? So many squiggly arms. Gold tooth, hello? The King of Cobalt has finally arrived and ready for some coffee. Want you could draw a gold tooth. This that's addicted to coffee. The uh, coffee lot kobold. I will put it on the list. <laughs> Here's the coffee brewing. All right. As it's on the list. Coffee tree trees that he cultivates. I think that would be pretty funny. Like coffee kobolds, they just grow underground coffee somehow. I think that's a thing. I imagine they could probably rig some sort of lighting thing that would not blind them. <laughs> probably. Coffee plants are understory trees. They do... Like, you get a higher yield if you have them in full sun, but they are adapted specifically to uh, live in the gaps between other trees that are taller than them, so... You could probably breed them to do low light vision. Uh... <laughs> low light vision. <laughs> My coffee beans have low light vision. Fuck, I can't do three things at once. I'm sorry. <laughs> this coffee no, tree has no light vision. Yeah. Uh, you could probably breed them to have uh, or to survive in low light conditions. I rolled a nine, by the way. A nine? Nice. Yes, it keeps the joke alive and going. And what if there will be a day where I forget? Has been uh, a half orc barbarian cowboy. Mm, glad that's not me. I hate drawing <laughs> cowboy hats. You know, cowboys don't have to have cowboy hats. Uh, no, but it's the fastest way to denote cowboy. There's like there's that... there's a couple different archetypes from old western movies. I'm trying to remember what they're all called. They're probably super racist, so it probably doesn't matter, but... They're also all definitely based off of samurai. Any cowboy, just yeah. a farmer with a gun? Uh, yeah, essentially, yeah. Um... Rancher, specifically. Cattle herder. Pro probably does depend on which uh, U.S. state you're from as well. Uh, as to what the definition of cowboy is, because I'm I'm quite sure that the definition of cowboy in Utah, where I live, is very different from the definition of cowboy in Texas. Aren't cowboys in Utah just um, like dairy farmers? <laughs> Pretty much, yes. All right. I mean, if you want to get into the history of it, they're all they're all farmers to begin with. Yeah, yeah, and and they all definitely herd cattle, because otherwise there would be no point in calling them cowboys. There was something about, something about the term. We I just I started watching a, like Yellowstone or whatever the hell it was called. Oh God, sorry. Um, <laughs> I was on vacation and my my yeah, my Poor family soul. was like, we're gonna watch this. I was like, eh, I like cowboys. It's fine. 
Uh, it was interesting. Not great, but it was interesting. Um, what the hell are we talking about? Cowboys. Cowboys. <laughs> Apparently the term cowboy is derived from not being a cow man. And, I, and it was the... Specifically, I think, because cowboys were all slaves. Slaves are indentured workers. Indentured servants. Yeah, indentured servants. And then the, the movies just kind of took it and went with it, and it became the popular idiom instead of cowman. Because <laughs> cowman's the boss. Yeah, I was going to say, wouldn't the cowman just be the person who owns the cattle? Mm-hmm. Bandanaed bandits. Poncho, pistoleros. Pistoleros, that's the word I was looking for. Top hat gentlemen. Yeah. Because there's, there's, um, so the white hats was a, was a trope. Um, all the heroes had to have a white hat. <laughs> well, it was just always like the, the white hat. Yeah, it's just a good guy, right? It's a, it's a sheriff. It's a, and the black hat is usually the, 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 um, bandits or the bandit leaders. Yeah. Um, cowpoke. I like that word. Cowpoke's a cow good poke. word. Yeah. Okay. I just, oh. Is that is that a reference to the cattle prod specifically? No, no, like folks. Cowpoke. Yeah, yeah or, but or, like, is it is, it is it is it? That term is way older than the cattle prod. <laughs> That's what I was. I'll look it up. Uh, later. I would uh, I would contest that because a cattle prod I am quite sure has existed since before Christ. Uh, you okay. Stick. <laughs> You're talking just like a, yeah. Yeah, I'm ta I'm nope. I am talking just about a pointy stick that you use to herd cattle, cattle. Which is why cowpulk would be the person who pokes the cows. Nope, cowpulk is just a uh, North American noun for a cowboy. Okay. Started in the 1920s, apparently. Gaucho. Another term for popular cattle, west but... during the 1840s when appealed to any man who worked with cattle and applied to any man who worked with cattle. It's also an adjective meaning someone who was reckless. Originally refers to a cowboy who prodded cattle into the railroad cars with long poles. There you go. Cow pro. <laughs> Druid was right. Uh, Druid made a lucky guess. Let's not say Druid was right. I made an assumption. Sometimes assumptions can be right. <laughs> a cow hand. Uh, an assumption made without proof is is uh, should never be taken as as fact. That's all. There's way too much of that, and I'm like, I'm trying to step away from internet hot takes. Hot takes. My question is, does a barbarian who's also a cowboy use a gun? I would think so. Uh, I, I mean... would think a barbarian who's also a cowboy uses a lasso. No branding irons. <laughs> pew pew! A little bit off the top of here, I found something on one of my character sheets that was kind of surprising. Curses and armors. The dagger I apparently has yeah, when I had a curse. So I've been decaying flesh, apparently. It's been slow decaying my flesh the whole time. Bummer. <laughs> so you're now a lich druid. A lich druid, yep. Or at least on half part undead. Is that McCree? I think McCree got his name changed. Uh, McCree yeah. was still the same. It's just his first name that was. Oh, is changed. it Jesse now? Is that what it is? It what, was what? Jesse. No, oh. it's not. What is it now? Cassidy. Cassidy. Another generic cowboy name. <laughs> Only because of Butch Cassidy, I think. Yeah. <laughs> the Sundance Kid. I have no idea if that's true. The thing I said earlier about cow, cow, cowboys. I'm going to look up Cowman. I'm not going to type in Cowman to the internet right now. I'll do that later. <laughs> you, you'll just get a bunch of 
minotaurs. <laughs> I might just get to minotaurs. <laughs> what kind of hair do maids have? Uh, are we talking about uh, the Japanese fetishization, fetishization, or are we talking about modern maids, or are we talking about like Victorian British maids? Well, the Japanese fetishization is the fetishization of the French maids trope, isn't it? Yes. Okay, so that's two. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, which is why I didn't think it would be French maid. <laughs> <laughs> what is that from? Uh, from Clue. From Clue. Okay. Yes, Yvette. <laughs> I like that hairstyle. That's pretty good. We do that. And just like a weird curled up do thing. Man, I love Clue so much. It just was such an underrated movie. <laughs> I didn't watch it for a long time, and then I watched it once, and I was like, yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> it's one of those movies that, like, I think, um... I mean, it, it's essentially one of the theater movies, right? Yes, yes, like, yes. It's inherently not a bad movie, so that's one thing. But, like, in high school... like Okay, so examples of these. This is what I'm going to say. The drama kids. There we go. The drama kid movies um, that are, like, highly quotable, kind of classic in their own right. But if you're not watching it as an excited high school kid, it's just like, yeah, it's an okay movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think I think or the three I think of are, are, like, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, um... Uh, Clue and Grease. <laughs> you, you know, I don't know. I think Grease is inherently a bad movie, but I, I'll, I'll let that one go. I mean, I agree. <laughs> uh, Princess Bride. So, like, Princess Bride is a good movie, oh. but yeah. it's like the movie itself could have been better. Like, it was kind of because it just is what it is, right? Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, I think I, those are all good movies and they're, they're fun. Not Grease. I don't like Grease. I've only watched it maybe twice in my life, and both times I was like, eh, I don't get it. I'm not it a music person, has, though. Yeah, it has always grossed me out. I can um, it with regeneration, but I don't know that it's this dagger technically and has an effect until I've actually looked at what my DM actually wrote for the instance instead of what I wrote. Gotcha. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing about, like, cursed weapons is the fact that they're, like, secretive. I like that. But, like, my friends are not, um, they're, they're so skeptical of everything. Like, they don't like putting <laughs> things on. Like, they're all always take, even myself, I'm kind of, I'm kind of the same way. It's like, I usually take, uh, Arcana unless it's, like, against my character because it's like, I don't want to get cursed by something. Like, I know how horrible this is. And I think that's probably because of, like, the old Baldur's Gate games and, um, like, older... Like, curses were, were super detrimental and, like, broke your character. So... I just I just assumed that your, your friends all uh, were terrified of items because of your specific DM style. I mean, yeah, that that's probably why, but it definitely goes both ways. <laughs> sure. A lot of old curses also, like, even just touching it transfers the curse to you. Yeah. Well, yeah, because, like, if a curse isn't super uh, contagious, then how are you going to get the full benefit from it? I, I mean, so, <laughs> I, should, I should preface this, that uh, the whole... We had a long-running Pathfinder game that probably went for four or five years. We haven't gone back to it in a while. I should really work on that. Um, the, but it it all hinged on Kevin the Necromancer finding this dagger, <laughs> and so it was like super cursed, but kind of good for him. And so I ran with that, and it became the MacGuffin for our entire entire campaign. Oh, no. Um, like there's there's like nine of them now and so Kevin's starting to collect them so he can bring them together because his deity wants him to revive him and it's a whole big long she like spiel of things but uh that's actually where the Tower of Ashfont came from was the, was the basis of that I just replaced that dagger with uh or not Ashfont I'm sorry um oh, what was, what's the name of my other city 
I made a YouTube video about it. <laughs> uh, the one Jonas played in. Oh, Jonas um, um, uh, City of Siltstone. Siltstone. Yeah, the Siltstone Catacombs is where that dagger was supposed to be. And then, because I didn't want it to, like, explode, I just replaced the dagger that they found <laughs> with a different dagger. But that was that was it. Like, that was the... the um, inciting thing for that campaign was was a cursed item, uh, and I really liked it. I really liked the way it went because it's like, yeah, you guys could just abandon this right now if you wanted, uh, and they chose not to, as a group. And then that kind of fueled the evil campaign because it's like, hey, we have this evil thing that uh, you know wants to destroy the world. Are you guys okay with that? And they're like, yeah, I guess so. I'm like that sounds fun. Let's do that. So there's lots of lots of really cool stuff you can do with those kind of things. Uh, when the alternative is just like, I cast remove curse and we ignore it forever. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> so I like, it. I really like the, the idea of cur cursed items. Um, you use that newfound curse for my advantage. Any sort of more like clutching have Lila actually help me out? Between everything that's happened, gold tooth is under a lot of stress. Gotcha. My introduction to cursed items was dungeon hack. Yeah, Dungeon Hack is amazing. I love Dungeon Hack. So, uh, for the longest time I thought they were just dumb. And it wasn't until, like, actually, I saw, like, actually interesting cursed items that I thought they were just something that shouldn't be in games, because why would you have a minus two sword that when you pick up you just can't yeah. use anything else? Yep, see, that, that's kind of what I was talking Especially Dungeon Hack was uh, almost roguelike, right? Like... It was very yeah. much, very much a uh, supposed to be procedurally generated, um, to which its extent I'm not sure anymore because it's been so long. But I remember like starting a run, playing it, and then like you pick that up and you're like, "Well, great!" And you just stop. You just like restart because it was like <laughs> this run is is useless. I'm gonna try something else. Uh, and yeah, oh, man, I love Dungeon Hack. It was fun. That would be a fun game to try to play on uh, online. I have been playing across the obelisk uh, quite a bit. I think that would be fun to play as well on stream with some people. Is across the obelisk multiplayer? Yeah, yeah. So it's essentially Slay the Spire, but with multiplayer, and it's really, really good. In a very different direction of multiplayer games, if you need to play with with someone. I got Monster Prom a little while ago. Monster Prom? <laughs> I think I did. Is that a Jackbox type game? No, it's a dating sim. It, I, it's pretty great. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a multiplayer dating sim, right? Yeah. Okay. I have no idea how it implements it because I haven't actually watched anyone play it. I've just heard it's good. I watched Drawfy. Uh, there was a Drawfy stream where they played that with a, a, a guest. Um, if you're successful in wooing your uh, ch chosen uh, target, uh, I believe it, it can, yeah, it can get pretty, it can get slightly raunchy. Gotcha. Did you guys ever, Markiplier just released uh, him playing Orc Massage or Orc Masseuse or something? <laughs> As a means of, I assume, countering the YouTube youtube plays favorites thing and i think mm. i don't know what happened yet i'll have to, have to look it up but uh it was pretty funny him trying to keep that like family friendly and it's like that nope nope i had not heard about this game but as i was watching it, i'm like this looks dubious at best and then and then it just like it went downhill very fast and i was like okay <laughs> <laughs> this is this is a porn game <laughs> I have not seen it yet. I'm a little bit surprised that that has not shown up in my feed. Well, maybe they blacked it. I don't know. That would be funny. Hey, I just I like like halfway through the video, he's he's like, they can't they can't ban me, can they? <laughs> <laughs> he's just calling out YouTube. The answer is no. <laughs> hey Rook, what's up, dude? Buttermations, how's it going? How are you today? Hope you're doing well. Uh, oh, okay, Goldtooth, hold on, I have to, can't, I have to catch up here. Uh, 
but, but, but Council of Dragons is going to attack us. That's why I want to hunt down Demigod. And Demigod, we're going to also try to take care of his family, but it was putting a lot of strain on him. Gotcha. Not a child friendly game. No, I don't think so. Doing pretty good. Good to hear. Good to hear. I'm going to do like cut off sleeves. That feels right to me. And she'll have like rolled up. Although, with Mark playing that, it makes me wonder if it's going to, like, because obviously it's going to bring a lot of attention to that particular game, and I kind of wonder if that's potentially going to start a, like, depending on how well those videos do, I wonder if that's potentially going to bring more attention to, like, adult-oriented video games. Sure. As a, like, more serious thing. I mean, so, it's on like, Steam, I think. Maybe it's not. Yeah. So, so I mean, like the the culture for adult based video games is growing for sure. Um, how does that work? How does how do hands do? Which elbow goes over which? If that hands over there, oh, she's got her arm like that. Yeah. Okay. That's right. We're gonna do that. Sorry. Go ahead. Continue. I had a, I had an art moment where I had to stop. <laughs> Um, I think, yeah, I think this might lead to, like, I guess more interest in, like, adult games that aren't just, like, oh, here's a naked picture, but, like, oh, here's some actual gameplay. Behold it with a mustache. Uh, I, I have no idea, and I don't know if this is the right <laughs> way to talk about that. <laughs> That's um, fair. I mean, that being said, like, games have been around, like, uh... Conker's Bad Fur Day was an adult-themed video game that wasn't porn. Um, that was highly successful, I think, back in the day. And then there was, like, the Leisure Suit Larry series has always been really funny to me. Because it's like a point-and-click adventure, but with boobs. Uh, they maybe made that game, like, five or six times, I think. <laughs> So, I don't know. I mean, like, it's not a new thing, but I do think, I do think, I mean, hell, Newgrounds is mostly only porn now. It used to be kind of a weird smattering of actual animation and content and, like, weird adult things. So, I don't know. It's, it's hard to tell how trends are going to go. Generally speaking... Adult themed stuff tends to not be pushed. It's just... Uh, just because people tend to freak out if they find their kids have access to it. Yeah, I mean that's that's absolutely fair. Like I played Duke Nukem back in the day. Yep. Uh, Duke Nukem is not appropriate for anybody nope. at any age. Nope. Um... <laughs> it's hilarious, but <clears throat> it, yeah, agreed, it, is. it is it is not appropriate for. <laughs> Loads Anybody. of games are rated M or T. Yeah, that, that's totally fine. So I think, and I think talking about uh, Google Tooth saying, Jack talked about it recently. Mark didn't make the video because he wasn't going on and had for a while. It's just been ended up fitting the current situation. Okay, cool. Thank you, Doctor Random. Uh, I put the Beholder with a Mustache on the list. Buttermation. We'll see if we get to that one. The it looks like the Orc literally has you say adult fun on it. Blah, 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 blah. You do not wanting it on a platform, but. It also gets away with both. Uh, yeah, and I mean, there is adult content on YouTube. It's just not... Um, like, I did I did a, one of my sketchbook reviews. Yeah, yeah, I did one of my sketchbook reviews where I went through my sketchbooks, which has tons of nudity in it. So that's... And I flagged that. I just... I said it, like, right when I put the video up. I'm like, this has adult content in it, you know? And so because of that, it drops it... Automatically drops it to limited... Um, limited revenue. And I get that, and that's fine, right? Um, it puts it behind an adult wall, and that is that is it. And so I think the the comparison that they're having is um, things like TikTok and Twitter um, essentially just allow adult content to be smattered in with everything else. And so it's a, it's kind of a crapshoot about what you get. And so it's a lot harder to filter that kind of stuff, for, specifically for parents. Um, and so YouTube tries to promote their family-friendly stuff more than anything else and makes it because of that youtube is 
not a good platform for um, the people that are posting that stuff. Because really, at the end of the day, like especially with TikTok and with uh, with with t- Twitter, it's usually adult entertainers promoting something, right? Trying to get people to come to their websites or or it's it's advertising. And so YouTube is specifically trying to make that not its forefront and that's keeping them off the platform. So people are worried that there's two things going on. People are worried that if you do just allow that stuff, then the platform will get inundated with it and that'll you know change the economy of it. Um, the right. other side of it, which is what that's Jack funny. was talking about, Jack Septicai was talking about, and I can't remember the YouTuber's name who brought it up, was that um, a lot of smaller YouTubers are getting flagged and automatically getting dropped down to that this is adult content you get paid less for it while larger youtubers are not like markiplier so that's the controversy that's going on on youtube i don't have any new information about it i would highly suggest go checking out those videos i think jack just released a new one this morning i will have to go watch it Um, yeah i haven't seen it yet but it popped up in my feed but um yeah so I, i don't have a lot a lot of extra to add there but uh yeah so i i i don't know i'm I hope that's not the case, that YouTube is playing, paying favorites, because I don't know. I can't say one way or the other. But at the same time, I also want to keep YouTube not a... Uh, I, I like that it's not kind of inundated with all of the advertisements that <laughs> TikTok and, and Twitter are full of. Yeah. Um, By the way, I'm ready for a prompt. Okay. What should I roll? Hit me with the number... Uh, we're down to 15, so roll me a d20, I guess, and re-roll fives. Okay. I like uh, Super Horror Bros video on it. Yeah, yeah I can check that out later. Nine. Corey, okay, yeah. Thank you, Bionic. That sounds right. Uh, an Awakened Fruit Fly Barbarian. <laughs> okay. A lot of barbarians today. We had five barbarians last week, so yep. I think people are just missing something in the too. water. I mean, the I just got. I actually haven't opened it up yet, but we just. I just got the, uh, the, uh, booze menagerie, and it's got a great picture of Minx on the front. <laughs> Minsk, Minsk, love it. Um, so maybe go for the just... eyes, boo, the, the eyes, eyes boo, the eyes. I try myself in the Cult of the Lamps art style. I still haven't looked at that game. I should really do that. Still some child-friendly content right there. Uh, pushing friendly content. Oh, yeah, it's like... Uh, okay, I'm going to go ahead and just... <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I mean, there, there's definitely... I think I think the issue with YouTube's current algorithm is not that they are doing these things because like i said i I prefer that the the channel stay somewhat uh like there's different levels right like the amount of cursing that used to be on youtube was how you got views um and it has since been pulled back because it's like if you curse like unnecessarily we get that you're doing it for views and that's not you know that's not that shouldn't be promoted um Man, that's bananas. Oh, for the fruit fly, gotcha. But at the same time, I think there is a... Um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Hold on. Shoot. Oh, uh, I want I want YouTube to stay somewhat family-friendly. <clears throat> because I think that... I honestly think those restraints can... Um, can promote creativity. Uh, when it's yeah. not just, just like basically... Everyone is still vying for views, right? Like, that's never going to go away. But yes. when you put limitations on it, I think people have to get creative and get around stuff, and I think that's good. I think it's good for it. And it keeps out a lot of the extra shenanigans. But I remember now. The problem, really, the, the whole problem is not that YouTube is choosing what it wants to promote and, fil- and filter. The problem is it's not transparent enough, and we can't actually make judgment calls about whether what they're doing is proper or not. And so, once again, that's a big, big thing that I think... It's been moving that direction that we need more transparency and we need to know how the algorithm works, but at the same time, people can abuse it if they know too much about it. So it's it's definitely a very, it's not an easy fix, but it is a conversation we need to have. So, 
that's about all I think I can get from that. Let me draw this barbarian lady. <laughs> what should we do to make her more barbarian-esque? Face paint? Just, I could do that. I think face paint would work. <laughs> I like the little chin strap tattoo that uh Yasha Yasha had yeah yeah it's so good such a good little accent the eyes boo the eyes <clears throat> YouTube kid is scary at Rook I'm I can DM you some vids about it. Uh, you two kids is scary. I Bionic, that sounds terrifying. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, DMing videos about the like the, the thing that's been going on with 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 everyone else. I mean, I'd, I'd be fine to watch that stuff. Uh, chat click over here all right thank you uh, ba, 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 ba. orisa vibes from overwatch are you drawing it as like a multi-limbed creature <laughs> i like that poncho burning i love ponchos by the way i don't know if that that's something that is weird about me i don't know if that's strange i love ponchos uh, ponchos are pretty great ponchos are great I have a really nice one made out of alpaca fur. Oh, it's okay. Ooh. I fucking love it. Uh, <laughs> I, I have never had a poncho that wasn't made out of nylon. Hey, yeah, man. Super nice. It's too hot, though. Like, I used to wear it. I mean, I got it because I'm like, I like living in the snow and not having a heater and stuff. But it's just become 
<laughs> it's become like this this thing here where now I live in like a very temperate zone and it's just never hot or cold and it's like mm, I miss being really cold <laughs> but, not really. <clears throat> but not really okay uh, I'm a supporter of the more and other things the boss when it comes to talking about obviously it's wearing blood and water yeah <clears throat> Yeah, I definitely think there's there's a lot of, of kind of weird instances. I mean, it's really what it is at the end of the day is you not everything. <clears throat> How do I say this the right way? Not all adult content is the same. Yes. So that, that is the first fallacy of any of these conversations and arguments that people have. It's like, YouTube's not pushing family-friendly stuff. It's like, that is too vague. And that's part of the problem. It's like, YouTube, you need more than a button. Is this made for kids or not? Is not a solution to you being able to filter what we're doing. Um, it's just not. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So I, I think that's the first part of the problem. But then it really does fall down to... Uh, transparency because and and that's part of it is is like hey my stuff is not made for kids but it's also shouldn't be flagged this way why is it flagged for this um yeah i still use my wool poncho in the winter it's basically a snuggie but less ridiculous and maybe culturally appropriated yeah that's that's the biggest problem is like i i love my poncho but i don't think i can wear it out because i'm an old white guy and it makes me sad because I love my poncho. <laughs> I don't know if it is uh, <clears throat> cultural appropriation. I think it depends on the patterning that's on it. Because like ponchos are old world things too. Yeah. Yep. That's a question oh. I've never really looked at or cared about to yeah. fix. Because I don't plan on like running around with it. My I had <clears throat> psychology professor in college who wore a poncho almost all the time. It was kind of hilarious. Yeah. Because you would see him, like, poncho over his backpack riding through the town. <laughs> riding through the town? Like, with on a horse? Like, on a bicycle. Okay. On a bicycle. <laughs> I was like, no, if no, you no, if no, you no. own a horse, you're allowed to wear a poncho. I don't care who you are. <laughs> if you're on a horse, poncho is acceptable. That is acceptable. <laughs> Me picking weeds in my front yard? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe not. Because that's the use case I have for it. Like, that's when I wear my poncho. When it's cold in the house or when I have to, like, go outside and I don't want to find a real shirt. <laughs> it's like, poncho time. Love it. Wool is scary to launder. Yeah. Wool is scary, but that's all right. So, I, we deal with it. Before. Yeah. But so is, like, any type of fiber that comes from animals. <laughs> Allowing content creators uh, to do more animations to have their animations and not get flagged. Uh, I, man, there were some... The only reason that half the animators even exist on this platform is just to make some money and show their art that they can't make money off of on the site. Uh, I, will, I will once again be the first person to say um, YouTube is not a great place to make money. <laughs> it's just like... Uh, <laughs> It, it has the, the option for it, but, like, most people who are making animations on the internet are not making any money, and it's sad. Um, because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, yeah. I mean, the last animation I did, I think, at the end of the day, I got paid, like, 20 cents an hour <laughs> to do it. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, There's... That's why so many animators turn to things like Patreon. Yeah, exactly, and and that's yes. that's a big thing. So so like, content creators are not really getting stifled by YouTube. Um, now hear me out. This is this is a long answer, so so don't get don't get too panicked about it, because the content they're selling is elsewhere, um, and that goes all the way. Like, Markiplier is by far. I think he's making. Him and PewDiePie and, like, five other channels are making the most money, right, from YouTube. But yes. they still, like, they are – Jacksepticeye is a coffee, sells coffee now. Uh, Philip DeFranco owns a uh, clothing company, right? Like, those are the ways that those people are successful. Um, and YouTube is just a, an interesting medium for them to use. So, so yeah, I mean, like, go support your, your, your favorite artists, your favorite creators. Go give them money on Patreon. 
go uh, you know buy their products if they make something if they're out on Etsy that that's a really great way to support them mind you don't stop watching YouTube but <laughs> but uh, like that's if you really want to support them fi financially which is not required you do not have to follow me on Patreon um, I enjoy you guys being here in the chat this is not a PSA to throw money at me um, yeah. but so if, hashtag if throw, yeah hashtag throw money at me <laughs> rugby you, needs you, new shoes um, <laughs> Sorry. If you want to financially support an artist, there are better ways to give money to them without, you know, paying through YouTube. Um, yeah. you, YouTube is better thought of as a way for people to market themselves than as a way for people to get paid. Yeah. So, so I, I but at the end of the day, like it, YouTube should be fair about it, right? YouTube should be yes. should be held accountable for treating people the same. That that's the real real um real issue that needs to be watched because it should be yes and so we'll and see. because this is how a lot of people get the exposure yeah. to their audience to give a small nod to youtube i have some level of not necessarily like favoritism but you're not going to make a contract with this like the high schooler that made one video and got two views right at the end of the day i oh god i just said that like three or four times <laughs> i should preface that's what i should say i should preface <laughs> that saying you don't make money on youtube is is for the most part most people will never be you know top two percent of youtube that's just it's just true. There's just too many people, right? But yeah. um, but YouTube, for what it is doing, is still one of the better places to offer that opportunity to make money to people. You can make a little bit of money by posting your content there. You just have to follow their rules, and that's why I don't have a problem with it. Um, because if you go to the other platforms, they are not as big, and that sucks. Like that's that's the downside to it. Because there are a lot of um, a lot of other channels. Or not a lot of other channels. There used to be a lot of other channels that you could like going through. Uh, like stupid video was there for a long time. I actually had a video on stupid videos that hit like a million and a half views, which was awesome. But there was no revenue source for it. <laughs> it was just it was just like oh I did a thing, <laughs> and it was awesome. That was 20 years ago now. Um, <clears throat> so YouTube is is they are not the like they could do better. But they are, I think, doing the best out of the options that are out there right now. Um, and it's, it's, I, I like YouTube. I really do think that doing YouTube videos is a lot of fun. It's an interesting place to, to do it, like to, to host the videos. And they do a fairly good job, except when they start doing these weird flub things that we got to figure out. So I've been drawing this maid for far too long. Um, <laughs> I'm going to give her a skirt because skirts are scary. Uh, and crazy comfortable. I need to get a kilt. Uh, I have no I comment for either of those. Eight, those. By <laughs> <the way>. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say you need a roll? Is that what you said? I'm sorry. No, uh, yeah, I rolled an eight. An eight. I'm so behind on the chat. Hold on a second. I've lost my my what? Here we go. A succubus blood hunter who hunts people in their dreams. I like that idea. Um, I mean, that is what original succubus lore is, right? Close enough. <laughs> it's an explanation for for wet dreams. Oh, I thought it was an explanation for uh, sudden pregnancies. Uh, no, I guess incubus. that would be incubus, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube is a judge that must judge without bias. I think that's fair. Yeah. This is not a skirt. This is a kilt. There's a difference. I mean, there's not. <laughs> a, kilt, a kilt is a type of skirt, and anybody who argues differently is lying to themselves <laughs> yep. and you. If you, if you take a kilt and you put metal on it, it becomes a battle skirt. 
So, <laughs> you know, put that wherever you want to place it and smoke it, I guess. I'm not sure how that saying works. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Yeah, put that in your pipe. <laughs> I was going to say, put that wherever you want and smoke it. I'm like, that's not right. <laughs> that's nope. not. That's not. <laughs> I am the hatchet maid. I'm gonna give her a big old axe. A hey, hip hip hip. When I was going to the University of Idaho, <clears throat> there were tons of tons of dudes that wore skirts around campus, um, but the tuba team always wore kilts for all of their games, and that was fun to see. Are they the Hollanders? No, what? We're the Vandals. <laughs> the Idaho Vandals. <clears throat> they just wanted to wear kilts, so they did. <laughs> that was it. No idea. I mean, outside of like pictures and movies, the first person I saw wear a kilt was at my uh, college graduation. Uh, Butter Mission, I'm trying to look at both. Uh, there's a lot in both, so I'm trying to keep up with both the YouTube and the Discord. Back in the day, I wanted to learn how to play the bagpipes. Ugh. And then I, then I decided not to. <laughs> I mean, it's very loud. It's very. I, I, yeah, I respect the bagpipes, but I have tinnitus, and those things fucking hurt. <laughs> That's Kills were really stolen from the theater department and then adopted into the band's uniform. There you go. <laughs> Look, uh, I, I'm just saying, as global warming continues to increase rapidly, before long, every dude is going to realize that uh, a skirt is a, a much better thing for men to wear in really hot climates. Did I ever tell you guys about the uh, Pikachu wizard? I think so. That sounds vaguely familiar. There was a man that would dress up like a wizard with a Pikachu hat. I don't know if he was homeless yeah. or just lived on campus. I think he went to school there. But we was, I'd see him walking around all over. Because every now and again, he would just be like sitting in the park smoking a very long pipe. And it's just like, that dude is a wizard with a Pikachu hat. <laughs> like... People can wear whatever the hell they want. Like I have, I I don't understand the uh, propensity of, of getting mad at people for wanting to wear whatever the fuck they want. I mean, like I don't either, but I live in a very conservative state, and um, I am not used to that freedom. Yeah. Never mind. See, the problem is you don't have enough Scotch-Irish people living in Utah. Yeah. If you uh, had plenty of There's only two Scottish type of people that live in Utah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't uh, we don't have enough of any ethnic diversity <laughs> in Utah. I'm just going to say that right now. Yeah. That is my opinion. You don't have um, enough different types of haircuts in Utah. <laughs> That's my big beef with Utah. Everyone has Truth. the same haircut. I just picture everyone with <laughs> the missionary style haircut that I always see from <laughs> the traveling and, missionaries. <laughs> yeah, and you would be about 80% correct. Yep. <laughs> I talk a lot of trash about Utah, but... <laughs> I mean... I, I do as well. I, I figure I'm allowed that since I grew up here. 
uh, and grew up in the church. Uh, a lot of it is maybe slightly unfair, but also a lot of it is fair. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I only one. thing I knew was the Capitol, and then when my little brother had to do a project in that winter school, he wrote a letter to the governor of Utah and got a big box of tourist stuff from Utah. <laughs> it's like venture brochures for Zion Valley. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. would, you, would you like to join the church? Wait. Up until I, think the... they did, I think they actually did include some... Oh, absolutely. I have been oh, I have no. been offered to be baptized so many times in my life. I am, I am a regular customer. See, they're not exactly common here. I mean, there's like one like a hundred miles away from my, where I live. <laughs> oh, like, no. I mean, I, I lived in um, the Boise and Meridian. Of... Yeah, it was. I mean, to be fair, there's two or three catholic churches so i'm not like it's not super different but like there are wards so like there's a church every couple of blocks um where yeah. i grew up <laughs> and a lot of a lot of my friends were mormon so I'm, a, a lot of idaho was settled by by mormons yep so Coming over from probably why y'all referred to those mormon potatoes as mormon cr oh mormon no, crickets yeah mormon, yeah so uh, they're they're called Mormon crickets specifically because uh, they like in the Salt seagulls, Lake. <laughs> yeah, it has to it has to do with seagulls and why seagulls are our state bird. Um, so they're 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 called Mormon crickets despite the fact that they're not crickets and they're not Mormon, um, yep. because uh, when uh, Mormon settlers first settled the Salt Lake Valley, uh, the uh, their very first crop was absolutely fucking decimated by the crickets that ate everything, right? Which is not surprising when you invade a very natural habitat and immediately set up a monoculture, uh, which is exactly what they did. Okay, um, I'm done. I'm done with this. I'm walking away from it. Not you can keep talking. Sorry, I'm done with this picture. Okay. <laughs> You you have been working on this mate for a bit. Yeah, it's been yeah. like an hour. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, so the they they're called they're called Mormon crickets specifically because of the uh 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 the horrible famine that they caused and then the next year everybody supposedly prayed really hard and then the seagulls showed up and absolutely destroyed the population. Um I would argue based on ecology that that probably would have happened anyway because seagulls are disgusting rats yeah. that will eat anything and uh, definitely would have been drawn to a surplus food supply. Like uh, too many crickets. She had surgery to give herself pointy ears. That's interesting. Not the weirdest yeah. body mod I've seen. I, yeah. I used oh, to hang out oh. a lot of punk groups. The lizard ones were the ones that were weird. I, I do not like the like subdermal uh, implants. Not no, me those. neither. Um, they they kind of freak me out. Yeah, lots of churches. That is a lot of churches. It's not how it works. You're supposed to ask to be baptized. It's supposed to be an internal reflection of choice, right? Right. And yet, <laughs> and yet, everybody has asked their uh, their their sons to to baptize me into the church, to which I have politely declined. <laughs> The I'm liking the pentagram straps burning. A beefy minotaur barbarian with an oceanic theme. Oceanic Surf and theme. turf. Surf and yeah. <laughs> no, <I was laughs> Surf and turf. Fuck you. The joke was already made. I'm just reiterating. It was. It was. It was written on the comment, and I purposely didn't add it to the. <laughs> to the. <laughs> And then Corvus just put it right back. It is hilarious, okay? It is a good joke. Uh, no, but I mentioned I've not seen that. I don't know what that movie is. It must be shared with the world. It must be shared. God. <laughs> Alright, we're going to draw some surf and turf. You said oceanic. I'm just going to draw, like, Davy Jones Minotaur. <laughs> so a simic hybrid minotaur? Uh, yeah, we do that. 
I mean, the original player race for D and D for Minotaurs, they were like pirates, so. Like in, I think, the Dragonlance setting. <laughs> I need pictures of Minotaurs, please. Uh, as everybody's opinion on the new one D and D, the new Wizards of the Coast thing is most likely pushing on us and trying to kill off the fantasy games from Rule Twenty. Uh, don't care. I, <laughs> you, don't, you don't care that they're pushing it, or you just don't. I, I, I I'm honestly kind of in that same boat. So yeah, I I, I just don't want to engage with the whole one D and D thing. For a couple of reasons. First, I think everybody's got their panties in a bunch uh, over the fact that everything is changing when everything is going to change and needs to change and is supposed to change. Um, so I just wish everybody would shut the fuck up about it and wait until it actually came out before they started making hot takes about how good or bad the system was. Yeah, I, I, um, I definitely, that's part of my thing with it right now is like I haven't done a video on it or talked about it much because there's nothing out. Like there is, yeah. there's one page of character creation right now that's what they released. They were like, hey, oh, come do the play test. And it's like, this is, th okay. I can't play test this yet. What are you doing? Um, I'll, I'll definitely jump on the play test once it's out. I'm really excited that they're using Unity, too, because uh, you said that, like, the guy that makes the whole bunch of things for Roll20 is out of a job now. Uh, I mean, yeah, no. But that's kind of how the world works. I mean, like, he, he has all those assets. I could convert all of those into Unity assets for him in, like, an afternoon. So I think he's going to be just fine. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Um, Roll twenty is hot garbage. I'm just going to say it. Uh, hashtag sponsor me, maybe. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I do have some of my stuff on the Roll twenty store. I think I, they they do not sell very often. And when I contacted them about that, they were like, "Well, you need to put up at least three posts and three posts." So that means they want you to invest uh, hours and hours and hours and hours of times to start making them money, and I, it makes me mad. So that's why all of my uh, all my 2D assets and tokens and stuff are f up for all of the Patreon members. Um, give me a buck. You can have them all because that's more money than Roll20 would give me. So, uh, yeah. So that's that. But I, I think my only real hope for one D&D, because what one D&D really sounds like to me, what they're doing is just going to make um, basically packet built game engines so they're building something they're building a, a, a tabletop server or a virtual tabletop that you can put asset packages into uh is i yeah exactly i i hope they make that free and then, and then if they put paywalls on their content perfect and i i have no no gripe with them at all they can totally do that um, but if they make you buy the game and then buy the packets, which has been their want to do in the past, I, I, just, I don't care. I'm just going to use Foundry. <laughs> like, Foundry is now uh, Pathfinder's go-to. And Pathfinder, once again, follows the SRD project of this is, our, uh, this is a game because it's based off the 3.5. You are welcome okay. to play it, add whatever you want to it. And if you want to buy our game content, please do. Um, so <coughs> if, if one... D and D turns out to be uh, just Magic: The Gathering 2.0. I will most likely be playing a lot more Pathfinder, and that's 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 my take on it. But we'll find yeah. out. We'll see. Because hopefully it'll be awesome, and I'll keep playing D and D too. Yeah. And I'll make. I think, I think that no matter what happens, I will be playing a lot more Pathfinder. They're making Neverwinter Nights Aurora engine all over again. Oh no, I don't know what that is. <laughs> what is Aurora engine? Was that a was that a, a virtual tabletop? All right, let's draw some minotaurs. I like that real beastly minotaur. I've been I've been in a kick for like massive horns lately for some reason. Yeah, that real beastly one that I posted at the bottom is uh, our our favorite Paizo illustrator. Oh, is it? Who's Whose name I can never remember. Mm, that's what Corvus is Wayne here for. Reynolds. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I believe that is a Magic the Gathering card. That is a Magic the Gathering card. 
I'm leave from Theros. <laughs> Theros had some really good art and some really shit cards. I just do not trust which Wizards of the Coast. They're just as bad as Games Workshop and getting much money as they can. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm, I, I think they're much better than Game have... Workshop, but at the same time, uh, yeah. their practices are not unheard of. I'll put that out there. Like, they've been pretty fair. A big problem that I've had in the past is like, and this was the case for Pathfinder as well. Um, when you buy applications like uh, Lone Wolf stuff, or um, the, the big thing with with Roll Twenty is basically other people had to build it or you had to buy it from them. Is you would like not getting PDFs and digital content, or having to buy things twice because they're in two different places. My biggest hope is that they do. They are collecting all those things, right? Like D and D Beyond being attached to um, to wizards is i think one of the smartest things that could happen right because then it, there's yeah. no translation error anything can be fixed and edited and changed on the fly and they have total control over it uh and then i hope that's why they stopped pushing the uh <clears throat> what is it unearth arcana because they're like we want to build this into the system so people can play test it right you have a play test server and a, and a real server and I hope that'll streamline that process because that'll be a lot of fun. I watched part, I watched part of the uh, video Goldtooth posted, uh, and it does look like when you buy books now from Wizards, uh, moving forward they're going to have a, uh, a a code in them so that you, like you can punch in that code and anything basically you can get those books in the D and D Beyond system. Sweet. Yeah, it's starting. It's not with Spelljammer, but it's starting with the Dragonlance books. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, it's, see, I think uh, that's yeah. I think that's smart, and that's really only possible because now they basically own the own the service. So as long as they can keep that up, uh, I don't really think D and D one is going to be anything like super new and innovative. It's just kind of getting the cluster out of the way, like getting the yeah. And then, so I hope I hope it'll be good. I think it'll be fine. I definitely been seeing a lot of people like commenting on it, and it's like this is literally just the first PDF. Yeah. Of like for what's probably gonna be about a, a maybe two years worth of Unearthed Arcanas coming out. <laughs> to me, it also seems like super early drafts because it's yeah, it's so gonna be similar to Sorry. like the tiny bit they've shown is basically like. A modified 5e yeah yeah yes and i, I really uh, do think i i think this is a smart model moving forward because um and i've talked about this in the past like the addition markers are always devastating right people push back people don't want to do things and so with pathfinder when they did it this way they're like we're moving forward with second edition here's a new way to play the game all of the old stuff is still viable like yeah it's all you can drag it drag it in there um and I think that's really smart. And I think I hope with this being D and D one, I hope the reason they did that and not just name it because they're idiots. Um, <laughs> it's the Xbox Four Twenty. Uh, <laughs> I really hope it is because then you can, like I said, you can have modules, right? It's like we're gonna play five E today. Yeah. We're gonna play three point five. We're gonna play two. That would be really cool. Is if they have you know all of that built integration. Like here's all the character sheets for implementing that stuff. Now you can have D and D Beyond Second Edition characters. That would be fucking cool. Um, that really would be. Well, and like they couldn't do that before. They couldn't do that before because the Wizards owned it, and so they could only get the license for the five E character sheets, right? Like right. they had to make those decisions. Now they don't know. Now those should all be optional and, and liable to do. Um, from what I've watched from it, like from from Wizards itself, mm -hmm. it's like what it's like quote unquote a code name for the next edition D&D &D right. one because like before 5th edition came out it was called D&D &D next yep. before they fully released it so this is like working in progress pre alpha yep yeah and, and but I mean, I'm of... pretty sure Jeremy Crawford maybe I maybe I'm misquoting him here but I'm pretty sure he said they're trying to get away with go be oh I don't know how do you say that 
move, move away, away from. Yeah, move away from additions, which I think is it's smart and not smart at the same time, yeah. right? Really, yes. the additions, all the additions are are um, like let's here's there's a new way we just, we're going to play the game. We want to change the rule sets a little bit, uh, and those delineations have split people, right? That's what I'm talking about. Is is like oh, oh all 2.5 is now invalid, and it's like it doesn't have to be invalid. It's just like you just have to look at it differently. So. Like giving seats with backgrounds. <clears throat> yeah. That's a pretty good idea, in my opinion. <laughs> I mean, it, it depends on the system, really, because 5e is, is really not designed for feet integration. <laughs> yeah, 5e is a, is a very low low feet game. Excuse me, I got the hiccups. Yeah. Um, that's why I have an issue with my module stay. I purchased it as rule or not. The kobolds, you know, give us both versions. Yeah, I, I once again, Goldtooth, we've talked about this many times. Uh, play whichever one you want, and if your DM doesn't like that, you know, find a different DM, uh, <laughs> or become your own DM. We have actual game engines now; we can probably allow you to play fourth edition characters, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thaco is great if you don't have yeah, to do the math. <laughs> like it worked fine for twenty years. I.e., look at Dungeon Hack. We can bring it back around, right? Dungeon Hack used Thaco. <laughs> this is a very sultry looking. Uh, Minotaur. I don't know what I've done here. Is it? Hey, it's giving those eyes. It's got the. It's got them eyes. Yeah, them it's got bedroom them, eyes. The bedroom eyes. Let's give them beach eyes. Come hither, look. There we go. I've been out on some gnarly curls all day. I don't know what you do. When you <laughs> All right, I'm ready Gnarly for new... curls. Gnarly curls. I'm ready for a new prompt. Uh, <clears throat> roll me d12. Eleven. Coffee druid kobold. All right, gold tooth. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. We get some. Uh, we get some gold tooth action. Yeah, and that, I mean that's the big thing about the books, right? The books. Once you put it in a book, it's it's the book, um, and then you have to reprint shit. So, I think I think I said them having access to D and D Beyond. I think was one of the smartest things they've done in a long time. Yeah. Partially because they should have just fucking made D and D Beyond ten years ago, <laughs> and uh, they're like, no paper. It's like, no, just let me please, just develop a good character sheet. I beg you. <clears throat> yeah. God, yep, just make up, make a freaking PDF, a fillable PDF version. For a long time, my Pathfinder characters were in Word documents. I would, I would make like a feet tree of what they're gonna do up to level twenty, and then just like, what level are they today? Level five? Okay, they have all of these. <laughs> <clears throat> Spreadsheets for your characters. Yep, spreadsheets. I had many, many spreadsheets for like uh, the dinosaur druid. All the stats for all the different, all the different uh, shape changes. It's messy. Why aren't computers making this easier for us? <clears throat> That's a bunch of old fogies are standing in the way. Yep. Do I want to draw gold tooth pre coffee or post coffee? Hmm. I would say post coffee. Wild wriggling pose. Got it. What was your worst NPC encounter? I never had a worst NPC encounter. I don't know. How to... I mean, like, worst as I've played way. or been NPCs, because, like, Lars has had some humdingers. <laughs> Lars loves making, like, super excited, eccentric characters um, that ignore the players. <laughs> so, Victor. No. No, 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 no. Oh, worse than Victor? No, it's not worse. It's different. It's different. Uh, how do I how do I say it? Lars made like there's one character I can think of, and it wasn't like it wasn't terrible. It was just the character was like the antithesis of my character, and so it was like I want to punch him in the face. Would that break the story? I'm gonna punch him in the face. <laughs> like that. That's all it is. Like they're not bad characters. They're not like shitty. They fit the environments. They're just like Lars loves making characters that are in opposition of mine. 
So I don't think they're bad. I don't think they're bad. The, the really funny one, this, the same one was like, he designed this character because he wanted it to be like, I thought you guys were going to love him. And we're like, no, we all hate him. We all hate him so much. <laughs> because he was just, he was supposed to be like a shifty rogue. And he kept giving us bad information. And then he's like, I'm going to get you guys through this door. And then Lars would roll for it and he'd fail. And it's just like, why did we bring you? Like, what is the point of you if you're not going to do the things you say you're going to do? Um, and it was funny. It was really funny how much the party just dis disliked this character. So that's it. I, and once again, I don't think it's a bad interaction. It's just fun. Doesn't, wait, doesn't it suck that you can't remove shared files off your Google Drive? Um, unshare them first. Yeah, you need to right-click, unshare them, and then you can remove them. Um, Google Drive is not the greatest... Yeah. Most user friendly thing ever, but you know it works. If it's a shared right. file with you, you just have to you just have to basically leave the shared folder. Um, which I'm assuming you're talking about like people sharing files with you from like school projects or something. Um, yeah, you just have to leave it. I I I've used many, many different uh, file sharing services over the years because of working for the National Science Foundation and different universities and projects and stuff. And, oh my god, I hate Dropbox so much. <laughs> <laughs> it is by far the worst. <laughs> I was not expecting that one. Um, Dropbox, Dropbox is hot garbage and greedy AF, so... Oh boy. Eh, you know what? You know what? I... Ooh, there's Microsoft's OneDrive. Oh god. Oh. Um, that is by far the worst one. I that one is used. the worst one. But it's the worst one because it never works. And I don't know if that's my fault or the five different computers I've had to have it on. Uh, it just never, never is intuitive or function the way I wanted. So, and yeah. I, I like, I hated that it forces you. Like, whenever you have a new computer, it forces you to to have it. Right. Yeah. Totally fucks up all of my files every time. I have to I I have to use a new Windows based computer. It is honestly one of the biggest reasons why I want desperately to move away from Windows as an operating system. Curse you. Oh wait. No that that seems fine. Okay. Yep. I tried to open Google Drive and it crashed my Aggie, because it does that. It does that. <laughs> I don't know what it is about Aggie. Anytime I have Aggie open, and then I try to open any Google product, uh, maybe it's because it's an app, so it just replaces the app window. Uh, it's super weird. Super weird. What is a Zorn? You know, I've heard that before. Zorn is like a, a clay pot uh, earth elemental that eats gems. Ah. That's Seems legit. Three lambs. Technically six limbs. Three legs, three arms. Yeah. Seems legit. They are intelligent. Can speak languages. Can be bribed. <laughs> I what is? Maybe he's got sunglasses. Maybe that's what I'll do. It'll fit on his face. I'm gonna put barnacles on his horn.
That's a Zorn. Gotcha. Nom, 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 nom. I see which. Oh. I wanted to give him like a sun hat. <laughs> but I don't think that's appropriate either. Adamal hat. You say Adamal? Adamal. Is that like a straw hat? It's like a straw fedora. Ooh, what if he's just got like a starfish stuck on this horn? That could be funny. I think that works too. Gooseneck barnacles. Gooseneck barnacles. Are those like really big noodly barnacles? Got kind gooseneck. Of, kind of. No, I don't want to them. <clears throat> We're going to get real weird. Here we go. I'm giving him tentacles. Got a tentacle beard. Oh yeah, those are gross. Let's put those on somewhere. <laughs> yeah, they're actually pretty popular food on like, the West Coast. West Coast foragers. I should retire and just go dig up worms for a living. I mean, it's a job. Yep. It is a job. Go collect sea kelp so the crazy white people. Yep. <laughs> I really do want to just retire and go buy, like, land and grow trees. I have no plan. Same. I have no plan. Could be Christmas trees. Could be lumber. I, I I don't know yet. I just I want to not live here, and I want to grow trees. That's that's my two plans in life, currently. I'll make a YouTube channel out of it. Call it, get a million subscribers. Call it call it Rook gets wood, and then that will just you know stick it to the <laughs> YouTube people. Or oh, I could call it stick it to the YouTube people. That'd be funny too. We could do that. <laughs> Lives on West Coast, that. we do. <laughs> like exactly well, that was not making like a complete BS statement. It's like, I'm pretty sure people on the West Coast eat these. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 there's a few things. I don't know. I think most things get eaten. Everything that lives eats something else that was at least once alive. People do need things to live. People also need things to die. <laughs> Mahogany wasps. I need them to die. <laughs> wasps are a weird one, aren't they? I, don't... I know they probably do some helpful things, but... I mean, I don't think they do. They That's... are really important predators, actually. Yeah. What do they kill? Uh, 
other moth, insects. But yeah, yeah, other insects, moth larvae, uh, pretty much anything that will eat your vegetables, uh, they will hunt and kill. Hmm. Uh, anything that lays eggs in your fruit trees, they will hunt and kill. I mean, you say that, but then they also eat your fruit and your vegetables. Yeah. That seems like a... Hmm. Maybe it's because I grew up with apple orchards. Yeah. And essentially every uh, horticulturist or person I've talked to about bees is just like, oh, you see wasps? You murder them. You murder them on site and you don't feel bad about it. And it's like, all right, all right okay. <laughs> so, yeah. I think in that context, yes. <laughs> yeah. It... In terms of, like, vegetables, uh, I'd certainly leave them alive. It, it it definitely d depends on the the type of garden you're doing. Uh, orchards probably. Everything is food if you're hungry enough. It's funny. Yeah, uh, I have not seen that TikTok. It sounds sounds interesting, and by interesting I mean strange. Yeah, I don't know. I I I've not heard an argument to not kill wasps, so I will murder them relentlessly, not for fun, but just because. So that they don't swarm and murder you. Yeah. I think that's the difference between, like, killing them on sight versus trying to eradicate them. Like, I I am a very live and let live kind of person. Um, I am, I will, spiders can live in my house. I don't care. But they don't belong there, so I usually throw them outside. If a spider is outside, fair game. Like, you know, you're good. Um, ants, on the other hand. Ants outside? Whatever. You know, maybe don't dig up my yard. Ants in the house? Instant death. You just, you, you, you fucked up. You fucked up. <laughs> ants don't belong in the house. Um, but wasps, yeah. It's just like, it's just like, nope. You lose. You lost the game. And I will, I will just, just instant murder. That being said, wasps look really cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like as a kid, I was like, "Oh, it's super cool!" And then they stung the shit out of me, and it's just like, oh, "God damn it!" I, I am slightly more forgiving to wasps than I am to fire ants. Yeah, I've been swarmed by fire ants too. That's not fun. Fire ants do not belong here. They are wildly invasive and and dangerous yeah. and. They, they are, they are uh, basically what happens when evolution goes too far. <clears throat> if someone could give me a, this is not, this is a rhetorical statement, but uh, if someone gave me a reason not to kill wasps, I would be more or less judgmental about them. But yeah, they eat my apples. Not happy about that. They eat my tomatoes. Not happy about that. They sting you when you try to mow the yard. Not happy about that. They try to live in your attic. I'm going to burn them down. I'm just going to burn them. Lots of wasp hate. <laughs> right here. Right here on this side of the screen. Prove me wrong. That's fine. I welcome it. Um, I've never had wasps eat on our tomatoes. Oh, yeah. No, they just they chomp everything. It's super fucking annoying. What what kind of wasps? Uh, Southern Idaho paper wasps? I want to say paper wasps. I was going to say yeah. dick wasps, but that's not... <laughs> It was a paper wasp. Honeybees are also invasive. Um, I don't know. I honestly don't that, know. That that is true. Technically, yes. The big old the bumblebee bees, but they're good. Like once again, from an apple orchard perspective, honeybees good. Carpenter bees better. Carpenter bees can hang out, live rent free in the trees. Cool thing about having a hive of honeybees is they're very territorial, so they tend to kill paper wasps if you have an, a large enough colony. Sometimes that takes three or four hives, which will overpollinate your orchard, which is not a good thing because then you have years with too much fruit and years with not enough. But you know. 
Wasps here have some kind of tarantula hawk, which have been killing off the wolf spider population. The regular yellow jackets and the white jacks. Interesting. Tarantula hawks don't eat your pears, though. So, yeah, you do have to be specific about what kind of wasps. Give me, give me a pamphlet, otherwise it's, it's on. Like mosquitoes, ugh, ugh. Mosquitoes feed a lot of things. I hate them, yeah. but they feed a lot of things, so I get it. I'm gonna not purposefully grow them in my backyard, though, you know? When I was little, I was, uh, my, my grandfather used to like, it's like, here's a 22, go get rid of all those ground squirrels for me. It's like, I don't want to do that. That's stupid. And now that I'm older, it's like fucking ground squirrels. <laughs> so I, I don't have to deal with that anymore because I don't live anywhere near a farm. But every now and again, I'll have like a mound of dirt in my yard. And it's like, oh, fuck no. <laughs> Where's that cat? Cat, do your job. <laughs> deal with this there's a possum did i tell you guys there's a possum living under my shit uh you didn't i don't think so let it live it'll eat all of the deer ticks i think so yeah it's been eating uh it ate all of our tomatoes i think <laughs> or not tomatoes straw strawberries it ate all of our strawberries mm. I was yeah, like, mm, yeah no, that's fair i guess but i think it's also getting rid of like the ground squirrels and the uh, the mice so whatever yep yeah. the slugs got our strawberries okay I didn't see, like, I didn't see slug goo, though. I just saw no strawberries. Like, slugs like to bite strawberries and then leave. I feel like something came by. It might have been the bunnies, too. We have bunnies in our house now. What the hell's going on in my yard? <laughs> that's what happens when you don't mow your yard for a year, I guess. I was going to say, that's what's happening. <laughs> yeah. The wildlife returns. Yep. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. Just a bad thing if you try to raise a garden. Some bugs have hardcore stink, and I don't mean stink bugs. Interesting. I, I mean stink bugs. A true would curse you? Probably. It would not be the first curse I've obtained. Probably won't be the last. I'm the only druid I know, and I didn't curse him, so... I don't know. Do you know other druids? I have no comment. <laughs> <laughs> this is entrapment. I believe the fifth. I actually leave stink bugs alive. <laughs> yeah, I don't really have a problem with other bugs. It's just just the wasps. Like I said, if we're outside and there's a bug, it's like, yeah, that's fair. You know, I'm not supposed to be out here. You are. Everything's fine with the world. Okay, I think we're done with this. It's like you just blood hunter. It looks pretty good. Like the eyeball, the head eyeball. I think the loaf cat keeps the rabbit away so far. Yeah. Loaf cat. <laughs> I think the only things we really have issues with is deer. Just mowing down our beans and peas. You still got bears. We have bears. <laughs> <laughs> Do they come in and eat your vegetables? No. Okay. We've never. Well, that's what I'm saying. At least you don't have bears. I would. A, a deer jumping over my fence is one thing, but when you wake up and there's a bear and you're out, outside your sliding glass door, it's like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> See, we live in a fairly food rich area for bears, so they never really bother us. Like, the only time we've ever had any issue with a bear is when it got into a shed that had apples in it. Yeah. And just took the bag of apples and ran. Mm, yep. Like, uh, yeah, that's fine. How many do we have left? Or what should I roll? 14, I want to say. I think 14. Mm, except I think it closed. Oh, there it is. We have 12. 12 left. 12? Yeah. Okay. Every coworker at this point is a BB gun just meant for shooting rats. Trust me, it's not working. 
Bunnies are adorable. Bunnies are adorable. They're all the seven. Get rid of the bunnies ASAP. They'll destroy the house. Oh, no. uh, oh whoops. Hold on a second. I already did that one. A Warforged Alchemist growing... Hmm. Okay. Sorry, I had to read that slowly. A Warforged Alchemist growing themselves fleshy parts to replace their mechanical ones. Homunculus uh, style. Yeah. <laughs> I was afraid of that one. I, was, I had to pause for a second. I'm like, is this appropriate? Can I read this? Uh, yeah, take that out real want, I guess. Read first, then say it. <laughs> read first, then say it. Um, what color is Gold Tooth? What color is Gold Tooth? I think he's a... Bronze? Bronze or, or brass? brass dragon? Yeah. Okay. I can never remember. His girlfriend is the green dragon, right? Something like that. I don't know. If I get anything wrong, Gold Tooth, correct me. What? You're cobalt. That's great. Oh. Coffee! I mean, what else is a cobalt who drinks coffee going to do? I mean, ascend the godhood? I don't know. Yeah, Giltooth is already there. <laughs> he is an evil, evil god. A nature god, like the Green Mother. Oh god, the Green Mother. I was reading on her last night. I was like, oh god, never mind. <laughs> She's a piece of work. Uh-huh. Did you want to boink a shrub and kill all humans? I was like, what? Yeah. Is that the like... right lady? I think that's the, the Green Mother, right? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. You have to really she... love nature. It's like... She is like the arch fae that kind of embodies Mother Nature in my mind. Just kind of vicious and vindictive and evil and everything is good as long as there's plenty of, uh, of things left living after you go on your murder spree. Yeah. After all, everything's got to eat. I'm partial to Mother Vulture myself. Grandmother Spider for the win. <laughs> I like the Lost Prince. H. Hey, Adam, hello, hello. I wonder if someone could use a Rune Knight subclass in large spell to just become a giant. Um, yeah. In older editions, you could. I think in newer editions, it doesn't stack. But. I'm always... You do become huge, so... Yeah, you can definitely become pretty big. I would argue if that's what you want to do, though, probably just start as a large-sized character. So it's... Tiny, small, medium, large, huge... What's above huge? Gargantuan? Gargantuan, I think, yeah. I start losing track of it after that. I wish that they would just have done, like, the the numbers associated with it. Like, zero is medium, then plus one or minus one, plus two, minus two. Okay, what about extra. diminutive? It's what, minus four? Yeah, minus four. Swarms. So it then becomes an eighth of a square? Yep. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the level at which swarms become a thing. Yeah. Because it's uh, it's not an eighth of a square, it's... I think it's... A sixteenth? A sixteenth of a square, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically, zero is takes up one square. You can have thirty-two uh, of them in the same square. Yeah, large takes up at 64. least two, as many as four. Is that right? I don't know. This doesn't matter. Man, it, it just doubles every time. Yeah. Was going back to the Green Mother real quick. Wasn't your red cap like a servant of hers? Oh yeah, probably. I think I mean, it sounds right. I didn't really pay attention much to it because I didn't care. But <laughs> yeah, no offense. Yes. <laughs> no, it's 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 fine. And also, the Green Mother was the one who was like, quote unquote, employing you guys. Uh, sexy lady, all about murder. Yep. Uh, of course, she was like the patron uh, of a uh, a red cap. Like that made total sense. I just like the dichotomy, of, or not dichotomy, the. Uh, I like that character. That was a fun character, because he was a paladin ish, right, a cleric, but like yeah. he was directly directly communicating with the thing that he worshipped. <laughs> yeah. And at yeah. that point, it's like he feels more like a knight than than like a cleric because he's not worshiping a concept or a god. He's just like, I'm going to do what she says. Don't you make me not do it. Protect the people. Over. You got it. <laughs> that weird line of like when a paladin becomes a warlock or a warp becomes mm -hmm. a paladin. <laughs> or it's just a cleric starts actively communicating with their, their god, right? It's like, do yeah. we trust this? <laughs> Are we okay with this? No. Like, there's the commune spell and then there's you're just having coffee with them. <laughs> there's a commute spell and then there's the cell phone yep <laughs> I mean the cleric trust him <laughs> and like I I felt like that was really appropriate for the, a fey campaign though yeah it was I think so so I like I will very very occasionally actually do that if it's appropriate for my setting for a, a normal character who has a maybe more present than they should be patron oh yeah kevin uh, the necromancer talks to uh sandro all the time like sandro is just constantly trying to mind control him and be like do this thing for me and he's like ah <laughs> i think i think that's how lars died once if i remember right <laughs> kill him And kobolds are so much fun to draw. <laughs> Pretty good. Maybe it's just because I've drawn them enough now that I feel like I can be really expressive with them like this. I have not drawn a lot today, but I feel like I've drawn some pretty cool stuff. I'm pretty happy with these so far. So good suggestions, people. Good suggestions. Oof, Mother Vulture is creepy. Yep. Come on, come on, come on, come on. She is a psychopump demigod. Gotcha. It was how Lars died, and I was knocked unconscious, then died because Kevin dropped me on my head on accident. That's right. <laughs> Is that accident in big air quotes? Uh, Kevin the Necromancer is an undead character and therefore does not take fall or bludgeoning damage because of reasons. Um, so, yeah, he was like, I'd better save these guys. Knocked Irenia unconscious, picked her up, and then I think jumped off a cliff or fell off a cliff. And it killed Irenia. <laughs> all the damage. Yeah, just all the damage. Uh... I think that's what happened. He either jumped off or fell off or fell through a portal or something weird happened. But Dropped. Dropped. Yes. This sounds like the goldfish incident. <laughs> I mean, it's different. It, there was less arrogance and more just incompetence, I think. It's 
It took me a moment to figure out what what's the burning drawing again? Oh yeah, the Warforged. <laughs> Your eyes keep cat. Just draw a regular person without skin. Same as hello, hello. I haven't been in one of your streams in years, but it seems that you're still making excellent progress with your art. Yes, I am. Thank you. I am over here, by the way. Druid is kicking my butt still in, in the render department, but <laughs> but I am uh, I appreciate that. Because rendering is all I do. Yeah. I think I might start. I think start doing the the live stream twice a week. Um, in lieu of more videos because the videos are few and far between because I've tried to increase the quality of them. <laughs> mm. So. Yep. Yeah, thank you for coming back. Hope you enjoy what you got. Do you have a suggestion? We might not get to it today, but uh, if you have a suggestion, I can put it on the list. Do people like doing the suggestions over the week? I mean, it definitely boosts channel engagement, so I like that. But at the same time, we could, I guess, alternatively only take suggestions during the stream and then just keep the list going. I guess then we'd have to see who it was and then people would forget. I yeah, Maybe the week. I think the weekly is a better idea. I think we'll keep it weekly. Yeah, yeah I, I think so. That's not he swapped dimensions into the wrong section of a lofted room that was bigger and taller than he remembered and fell. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's right, because he teleported. He used his boots of teleportation and flubbed it. That's, that's right. Okay. A uh, really fun character concept is actually about to use is a Shadowcar. Uh, is that the Shadow Elves, I think? Shadow Magic Sorcerer. I love the fact that they're both raised in subclass come from the Shadow Fell. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. Not to mention you're trying to roleplay a race that has very little sense of self, and you have high charisma. Interesting. Yeah, that is a cool way. That's a nice idea. Todd Bomb suggestions. What do... I don't know what that Quarian. is. A Quarian. Quarian? Yep. Which one's that? Um, Mass Effect race. Oh. Gotcha. Probably gross. I'm going to assume it's gross looking. Um, Todd, we normally do D&D &D characters, but uh, yeah. We maybe take a look at it. We'll add the Shadow Elf to the list. Shadow Kai. Shadow Kai. Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai, yep. Wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I cast Shillelagh. Uh, I mean, we've seen, I guess, spoilers for Mass Effect Three, but we see what Tali looks like under her mask. Yeah. Gross. Never got into the Mass Effect there franchise, so I don't particularly care about spoilers. You think I would have? I think it was only on console for a long time, and I just didn't have the console. Mm. But it's all definitely on PC now. I just oh, never yeah. picked it up. I, it's one I've been told I would probably really like, but it's a first-person shooter. And, oh, like... no, it's because it's a KOTOR game. Oh. I hate the KOTOR games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not a first-person shooter. Oh, it's not? Okay. No, oh. yeah. it, it has third person elements third person shooter elements but uh, most of it is third person rpg so that's basically yeah um yeah i really love those those masks like those guys are really cool i don't know what they look like underneath funniest nat 20 you've ever gotten Ooh, i don't know i nat 20 one of my own characters once like i, I as an <laughs> I, 
<laughs> I murdered one of my own NPCs. That was that was kind of awful. They critted them. <laughs> I was like, I need him for the storyline. I better save him somehow. <laughs> 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 Plot armor activate. Doing suggestions during the stream would allow people to join automatically, but the characters drawn, but not allow the ones that suggest during the week to not get a chance. Yeah, I really like, if people have suggestions for characters, I'll add them to the list. I think that's definitely a way to, to go. Um, I should try to figure out, I think it might be interesting to do, like, people can vote um, for the ones they like, and then that way maybe whichever one has the highest ranking, uh, we draw that first. Like, that could be an interesting way to start it off. Um, that way the people who suggest during the week would have an opportunity to like to, to choose instead of just letting the dice roll it. Um, once again, rife with trolls though, so I'd have to be careful about that. Yep. <clears throat> but that could be interesting. I'll put that in the next one. We'll try that once and we'll see what happens. So whichever one gets the most the most upvotes, the most thumbs ups, thummy uppies. We'll, uh, we'll draw that one on Friday. Or maybe, I guess, I guess we could do that too. Yeah, whatever. Uh, but now the list is not there. Next week. We'll do it next week. Start fresh. Start fresh. Uh, Does this look beach-esque? I feel like it's a well, little a little deep sea, but not maybe not beach. Well, thing said not beach but oceanic. Oh, well then we're doing fine. Yeah. You just decided to go beachy. I went beach. Yeah, if if <laughs> you wanted to down. do surfer bro to like really lean into the surf and turf, uh then maybe you're a little far afield, but Yeah. As far as the prompt goes, I'd say you're right on track. Some more tentacles, because that's not disturbing. Do not at all, like tentacle mustache. I was thinking about that, but I mean, I guess we could just. I mean, you can have it going on. I kind of yeah. I'm... So what if what if we just put like little tentacles down here? That's gross, right? A braided tentacle mustache. <laughs> that is gross. Squiggly bits. Yeah. Burning your your growth chamber is disturbing and awesome. <laughs> a fathomless warlock. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> oh man, I'm still disturbed by uh, God. What what was the Star Trek movie with uh, Next Generation and the Borg? Was that First, uh, contact? first contact? I think it was, yeah, first, was contact. first Contact. Data getting like skin grafts. Ugh, creepy. Still haunts me to this day. Yeah, I believe it was. Geiger. I believe it was designed to. <laughs> yeah, I know. Definitely, it definitely elicited the reaction they wanted. The Barbarian is now a warlock. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I like that idea of a Barbarian warlock. An elephant race that rolled a net 20 and flew like a helicopter. That is a, that is a, a lax DM. That is, some, that is some rule of cool right there. Star Trek Voyager has an alien race where they steal organs, including skin from other races. That's right, they did! Oh, man, those guys were creepy. I love Voyager. I think a lot of people didn't, but I was, it's one of my favorites. It's probably one of my favorites because that was, like, one of the first Star Trek series that I decided to watch by myself. Like, Yeah. Nah. I got to watch it, like, as it came out on my own time. So. I liked it. I like it. I definitely like the concept of it being lost... Yeah. It's anecdotal, but I feel like people either really like Voyager or didn't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. 
Like I, I think there's a lot. I think there's a lot more of like, uh, non-participation than hatred for it. If that makes sense. It's just yeah. like, oh yeah, that was that weird Star Trek spinoff, right? It's like all Star Trek shows are spinoffs. <laughs> if that's the way you want to look at it, for sure. Um, yeah, I think Deep Space Nine is the one that everybody was either love or hate. I really like Deep Space Nine too. You mean Babylon Five? <laughs> sorry <laughs> that joke was made when oh, before. Right. <laughs> I've never watched Babylon 5 um, for From what I've heard is you either watch Babylon 5 or Deep Space, Deep Space 9 <laughs> if you only watch commercials they seem very similar <laughs> yeah on a surface level they seem really similar what are we thinking time wise I think I'm about done it's 1.30 okay. I think this will probably be the last one. Um, I think I'm done with Gold Tooth. I hope it. I hope this is appropriate. I don't know what Gold Tooth actually wears, so I figured this is just first thing in the morning when he's in, when he's sipping coffee in his undies. Dragon Ball Z D and D would be super OP. Uh, like running a D Dragon Ball Z campaign, or just having. Goku be in D&D &D because yeah I mean Goku is a god level character yeah and doesn't really fit in his own universe no <laughs> yeah, several times comes back <laughs> becomes god decides not yep. to do that anymore <laughs> It's a second level of God form. Yep. Because. Because, I guess Toriyama can't do anything without power creep. I, yeah, I've never been clear as to why that series couldn't just end gracefully. I have no idea. Toys, man. The toys. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's very. They very much. <laughs> It was the era when you could sell toys and anime at the same time. Dragon Ball Z was very much a product of its time. Very formulaic for filler's sake. Um, what was its thing? What was its thing? I think I think that's about it. I think that's a pretty good deep minotaur. I should have made him look like a like an orca or something. That would have been interesting. <laughs> I just wanted him to look. I wanted him to look soggy and uh, like stuck at the bottom of the ocean. So I hope that comes through. The Minotaur version of Nautilus. Yeah. <laughs> I like him. I'm gonna put Gold Tooth back up though. Gold Tooth is good. All right. I think that's probably a good place to call it. Um, thanks everybody for hanging out today. That was a lot of fun. I think we will probably try to pick this up on Friday um, if people are interested. And we will just keep keep on keeping on. Next week, we will try to run that as a contest thing. So just when you go to vote, and I'll make sure I leave a comment about it. Uh, if you like one of the other suggestions, give it a thumbs up. And we will we'll draw whichever one has the highest um, next week. So that's it. Feel free to vote for your own if you want. I think that's totally fine. But vote for as many as you like, and we'll have fun with it. We'll see where it goes. Uh, check out some of the other older videos. Um, I'm trying to get a lot more traffic on some of the newer ones, like the slime video and the... Uh, what was the last one I did? The Cobalt video? The trap video. Uh, I don't know how to make things go viral. So just like go there and type one thing and be like, this is amazing, I love it, it's awesome. That would be helpful. That's all, that's all I need. Uh, other than that, stay happy, stay healthy. Keep your dice on the table, and we'll catch you on Friday, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for the great suggestions. And thanks for everybody that was uh, hanging out with me in chat. Bye.